Tank 16. Today, you know, everybody is entitled to their own style and he can really go all the way with it and this allows people to, to do whatever they want, to, to mix worlds however they choose to do it. And the mix of uh, different cultures and different uh, uh, time periods is the best thing we can uh, make. This is an example for combination of three cultures because there is hearts of palm, hearts of palm is Brazilian, there is a raw salmon from Japan, there is olives from Peru. Postmodernity or late modernity is certainly some sort of a, a name given to, to all kinds of cultural trends that took place in late uh, 20th century. Architecture was probably the first uh, cultural uh, area to use the word itself. What we're talking about with postmodernism as a style within the arts, within culture, uh, is blurring distinctions between genres, between units, between things that we used to think about as uh, solidly different from each other in, as, as cultural units or hierarchies within culture, what is high culture, what is low culture, popular culture. Tell us a bit about the design of the shop. It's obviously some sort of butcher yeah. influence. Yeah, it is butcher influenced. I think it's, it's from the same place of trying to um, to display something as delicate as jewelry on, on, on a massive display. And it just struck me that I need a um, display that, that's protected with glass and it struck me that the, the cheese or meat refrigerator could has these same um, qualities. So this is how it started and then everything kind of was built around it. <laughs> the whole store is made out of cardboard tubes that are used in the fashion industry and linoleum, bringing and fusing different types of design from different media and fusing them together to create a, a new language. Um, I think that's, the, that's where the world is going. Whereas in modernity you could somehow map globally the, the, the picture, the, whole, the big picture of of art, of culture, saying this is this, this is the other, this is up, this is down. The change that arrived with postmodernity is one that you know that something has changed, but on the other hand, you don't have a new map uh, to picture the whole thing in a very clear order. The order is not there anymore. It's not so much uh, imperialistic anymore, where you like take something and it takes over you for a while and you know, everybody wears like Chinese influenced or cooks Chin with Chinese spices. Uh, my dress is a printed dress uh, of kimono and you can see a lot of uh, kimono details, but uh, this is uh, illusion. You can see here, 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 here Obi and the uh, fan and the, some uh, text from uh, from a Japanese yeah. magazine about uh, motorcycles <laughs> because the was an idea to make it more modern it's because more fun. and more fun because we also have a classic version but also twisted because we use here embroidery of a, a fish and fish but a Chinese embroidery and never Chinese embroidery can be on real kimono okay I think that Bob Blau in every collection has a different story of fusion. Like she'll take one collection, it will be like a Japanese influence, and then another collection, it will be all about like Anna Karenina and it'll be very Russian. And so she likes uh, to take very stereotypical sort of elements in design and uh, and treat them with humor towards her design. Let's do fun. <laughs> The, the idea of, of how can you tell the difference or what constitutes singularity, uniqueness of one nation or one ethnic group 
as opposed to, to their neighbors or others is, is a question that rises here sociologically. And if you can see all the culture, Japan, they have a chicken katsu. What is chicken katsu? It's schnitzel. What is schnitzel in, in schnitzel vinai? You know, you can see, like, in a lot of cuisine, the same food with different method or different flavor, but it's the same food. The, the question arises, is there Israeli fashion? Is there such a thing as Israeli design or Israeli fashion? My grandparents came here with fur from Poland and gold and diamonds, and they weren't like, they were very European. That, that's, my, that's what I saw in family photos. I was born into this soup. Like we are a melting pot of styles and cultures, and that's, that's the way we were born. It's a mixture of East and West within itself. The idea of, of cultural homogeneity of nations is, is a fiction. I mean, it never really existed, ever. During high modernity, in the 19th century, mid 20th century, most uh, national cultures uh, sought to arrive to such a condition of homogeneity, cultural homogeneity. But this was done forcefully, marginalizing other groups, sometimes even trying to, to make them disappear altogether, at least culturally. All those minorities or, or weaker cultural units they were hidden by the, by the hegemonic or dominant groups. And in late 20th century, this power uh, structure somehow got weakened. That's why we come into the, uh, to the point where we speak about multiculturalism. You know, Japanese have amazing rules about wabi-sabi and aesthetics and the perfect is imperfect and take the ideas and work them into a Western aesthetic, then I think that's where things inter that are interesting happen. With fusion, with hybridity, which is the thing that is happening in the world today, on the one hand, you certainly lose certain types of or certain elements of, of uh, pre-modern ancient uh, cultures. On the other hand, you gain all kinds of new things that make the world, for some of us at least, maybe more interesting. People don't work alone anymore. It's not like you can have a show, put a tape, play some music. It's unacceptable. People have to collaborate because that's what the world is all about. And that's what sort of the experience that we wanted to give the customers. I brought into that kind of family, our family, uh, an architect called Guy Zucker. And he sort of brought in the idea of making a merge between fashion and architecture. How do we make a store that feels like fashion, that the architecture in the store feels like fashion. And we sort of talked about the, the short life that garments have these days with trends and trends cycling. Well, we called it delicatessen because it was supposed to be a place where you sort of spoil yourself. Originally, my studio was in this space. So the studio was in the back and we sort of treated that window as like a bakery or a delicatessen where things come out of the studio and sort of this line, taking uh, things out of their functionality and sort of treating them as design elements uh, and not as what they're supposed to do anymore. Like a sleeve doesn't just have to cover your arm or a button not necessarily has to go into a buttonhole and you can ch choose to use that button as a design element or that sleeve as a design element and treating it as, as something ornamental. Or for example, this uh, dress that we made that's sort of a shirt dress and has half a collar of a, a half a lapel of a collar and sort of brings it back into its original shirt dress ways and um, and we chose to make it only in black and white fabric prints as sort of a background and then taking this oversized zipper in a very contrast color and this is really the only design element that really like jumps at out to you what I found fascinating is when I went to buy the zippers for the clothes I went to the, the zipper factory, which I've never been to before, to the workshop, and this is how zippers come off. 
yeah. the machine. And they just came out like ribbons, ribbons of zippers. And I said, well, we have to do something with that. There's probably quite enough uh, uh, cultural enclaves out there in the world, somewhere in the world, that weren't exploited yet by, by the cultural industries of capitalism. They will come there, I mean, be sure. I mean, but at the moment, some of them, I guess, still exist in some isolation. Moreover, because we are aware of this, you have preservation forces that try to prevent cultural capitalism from arriving at those places that are still away from its reach. Like, I think about the people of the Amazonas or something that you have actually movements of people who are trying to keep away modernity and trying to keep them as... Which is also questionable. Why, what, what right do you have or, do, or do, do I have to keep modernity from arriving at some remote corner of the world? You never know what form will hybridity take in this or other part of the world. So it still remains always a possibility to, to, to discover, to find out some mode of hybridity, of fusion, of music, of food, or whatever, that is happening in somewhere in the world that is different from what happens in other parts of the world. And this will be something to explore for some entrepreneur or artist or whoever.